Hey and welcome to another Coffee in Kilowatts. This one looking at the Rivian Adventure Network and more broadly, what does it mean for uh, public fast charging? Should we have this kind of exclusive network? EV charging in areas that are a little more uh, inaccessible. Um, where do we see that going in future? So uh, grab your coffee and we'll dive right in. So as you can see, if I turn you around here, we're at uh, a local wildlife reservation area and uh, there's a charging station here. Uh, many of these do now have charging stations, whether they're like this one, complimentary, and a Clipper Creek, basic, just plug in and play, or a uh, charge point networked station, which will uh, have a fee. But uh, yeah, we are here to kind of take a look at what you can get whilst you charge, um, you know, where you're, uh, this isn't in a remote area, this is obviously Metro Boston, so uh, not somewhere you're going to struggle to find a charge, but this is the kind of area where a level two charge and a hike over two or three hours could certainly work for you for destination charging, and it's the kind of thing that Rivian is looking to serve, at least with their Waypoints network, which we'll come on to, but also, you know, even the fast charging Rivian Adventure network, which has its own own limitations um, that will be useful for people in remote areas as well that is the brand that is what they're targeting so we'll look at that as well but moreover we want to look at the exclusivity of this network um, how is it kind of rooted uh, will it last because there's uh, some potential for pushback against Rivian in the longer term I think but we'll get into that today whilst we plug in and go for a hike So here we are out in nature, but how do we get here in an electric vehicle? Well, that's uh, Rivian's challenge in some ways, uh, marketing themselves as an outdoor brand, outdoor adventure, with Rivian needing to kind of bridge the gaps that uh, other networks haven't been able to or haven't needed to. Um, they've created this adventure network, but essentially we're talking about you know, a nationwide network which is going to be built out for one brand, which obviously rings true of Tesla as well. But, um, you know, they had to do it. They started at a time when there was nothing. Now we're looking at uh, Electrify America having crossed uh, the nation, having 600 sites, which is coincidentally exactly what Rivian is attempting to do in the next uh, two years. So let's get on to the numbers, what it means for EV adoption in general, and what uh, Rivian might do in the long term if there's uh, pressure on them to do so. So Rivian Adventure Network, 600 plus sites planned uh, in DC fast charging terms for the Adventure Network. That's uh, by the end of 2023, which certainly seems ambitious. Uh, you consider that Electrify America has done it with a massive budget of uh, just under three years. So, you know, we're looking at two and a half years perhaps here um, for Rivian to do much the same, albeit with their own technology, with a single um, station, single vendor and uh, having it all in house so you have to assume that that's going to be a bit quicker less testing they only needed to get it right for their models that kind of thing to be across 3500 fast chargers which are capable of 200 to 300 plus kilowatts over the uh, initially starting at probably around 200 and then ramping up to higher uh, faster charging where they're able to um, so that puts them at somewhere between five and six uh, charging stations per site uh, it's probably going to be spread on some that will start as four in more remote areas and then others you'll maybe get up to eight and ten it's very much future proofed it's uh, capable of charging their vehicles um, up to 140 miles in 20 minutes so again all these stats are uh, you know specific to Rivian uh, the R1T truck and the R1S so this is um, exclusively for them. There's also a second piece to this, which is the Rivian Waypoints Network, which is, again, by the end of 2023, looking to put up to, uh, well, 10,000 or more uh, level two chargers capable of 11.5 kilowatts uh, into um, more, you know, shopping, dining, retail areas where you might uh, linger longer, uh, go for, um, you know, overnight stays, that kind of thing. So those are actually going to be open to um, public, the public. So that's going to be the J70 and 72 standard on the Waypoints network. Um, 
and the Rivian Adventure Network is going to be on the CCS standard as opposed to something like Tesla, which has its own proprietary technology and connector. Um, so we're looking at something that potentially other EVs could use, but Rivian has chosen to say this is exclusive to owners of the R1T and the R1S. So why is that a problem? They built it, they paid for it, they can do what they want, right? Yep, absolutely, but uh, there are some kind of drawbacks that make me think that might not be the way it stays. So the first one obviously is uh, the same criticism that Tesla gets uh, called up on, having a closed network when they're trying to push EV adoption and push electric vehicles for the masses. Now I don't hold <clears throat> Tesla accountable for this, you know, there was nothing similar uh, or no real will to build a nationwide network or a global network indeed, when they started, uh, you know, rolling out the Model S properly in 2012. They had to build it, they did build it, and then they were so invested in it by the point of, uh, you know, other EVs like the uh, BMW i3, Bolt EV, all that kind of thing coming along. So why should they open up the network? Well, obviously they build it, they can uh, pay for it, and they'll do what they want with it. Um, I think the point will come where they're trying to make the case that they are a, you know, environmentally conscious, uh, driving EV adoption brand, um, but not opening up something which is 100% renewables powered, where they have the Rivian Waypoints network, which they've opened to the public. If you can do that, why can't you put the um, Adventure Network fast charging on the table as well? Um, again, for a premium price, uh, for a priority for Rivian users, all kinds of ways that they could uh, accomplish this. But essentially, once they flip that switch, presumably, again, I'm not, uh, you know, not we don't have enough details necessarily, but the hardware is there. It's a CCS connector for a CCS vehicle. Um, so you have to think it's software limited, um, that exclusivity. So if that is the case and they can flip that switch, I think increasingly they'll be under pressure with this massive nationwide North American network to open it up to some degree, whether it's premium access uh, for Rivian, uh, you know, they get priority um, and everybody else has a high price. Anything that opens up, you know, a massive nationwide uh, fast charging network will be something people will pay for if there's no other option in the area. Um, and also again, 100% renewable, you know, if they're, they're saying that all their energy that they buy for this network is 100% uh, renewable, like EVgo, um, you want that available to everybody. You want all electric vehicles to be able to use something like that network. So uh, I think they will come under some pressure uh, for all those reasons, whether or not they'll buckle, whether or not they'll find that this is actually money on the table because that all those resources are sitting there, you know, quite often unused because there is such a small handful of uh, Rivians on the roads for those first few years. Um, will be interesting to see, but uh, I do think they'll face some pushback there and maybe a little bit of uh, brand degradation if, if they don't come up with some kind of halfway point. But also don't want to focus just on the negatives. You have to say, you know, applaud them for the uh, Rivian Waypoints network, the level two up to 11.5 kilowatts charging, which will be, you know, most likely going in in some very remote areas in a lot of cases, uh, ski towns, um, hiking trails, all this kind of thing, which we do are, we actually are quite well blessed with this kind of place in uh, New England. You know, we went up to the White Mountains stick the trip video up here where we relied uh, solely on destination charging because new hampshire has not pulled its finger out yet in terms of fast charging um and again you know trailheads hiking uh going to mountain resorts charging there having meals in the local mountain towns all that stuff kind of kept us topped up to uh to make those trips possible so just adding a you know a massive uh dose of level two charging at uh you know even better up to 11.5 kilowatt will be a, a big bonus and there's you know 10,000 of them across the nation with Rivian focused on these key towns that kind of joins in nicely with the uh, the kind of early days of the Jeep initiative that you see with the 4XE it's a plug-in hybrid Jeep um, you know preceding the Jeep Magneto which is all electric uh, they're using um, solar installations to have those J1772 connectors at trailheads it's going to be very handy um, on these routes where you don't have many options especially when you're having solar powered EV charging um, to to use those systems and to have those options uh, in these places 
give, gives people a bit of peace of mind that whilst they're doing these outdoor activities, they'll have the ability to charge their car and get back to where they need to go. So all positive in that sense, it's just this exclusivity that's, uh, you know, niggling a lot of people and maybe why they haven't received such coverage, you know, because there's a lot of focus on EV charging at the moment. It's slightly surprising that Rivian hasn't received that more widely. And I think part of that is that it's exclusive So over to you, um, do you think that an exclusive uh, EV charging network is uh, a waste of resources in this day and age? Should it now be everyone pushing in the same direction and uh, all investment benefits all electric vehicles? Um, do you think that Rivian has the right balance with uh, putting fast charging for their vehicles exclusively to get that uh, Tesla-like kind of uniqueness and uh, an exclusive selling point for the brand with then L2 open up for everybody else? Or do you think that the whole network should be open and uh, they should kind of make themselves the Halo brand for uh, EV adoption? And then would you use them? Uh, you know, if, if with the knowledge that uh, the net fast charging network is exclusive, would you then use the Rivian Waypoints network when you come into uh, the opportunity? Um, do you visit these kind of remote areas where there's just not enough charging and you think this would be a uh, valuable addition to the local infrastructure? And long term, do you think that Rivian will come under pressure? Do you think that the pushback from the EV community to uh, say that, you know, we're, we're crying out for charges here and here you are sitting on this gold mine of a, a nationwide network that uh, only a handful of cars can use do you think there'll be enough pushback to to really make them uh, change their mind and think differently about ev charging let us know down in the comments uh, hopefully this has been a good coffee in kilowatts we'll try and get back to a regular um, beat of these uh, in the near future here from the great outdoors enjoy your coffee and talk to you soon